Hi everyone, welcome to AKT's quarterly release webinar. My name is Danny and I'm AKT's Head of Technical Solutions in the HR Cloud practice. I will be presenting today's webinar together with my colleague Morty. We do in every quarterly release, we will spend the first part of the webinar covering the latest enhancements across all success factors modules. We hope that by the end of this webinar, you'll have a comprehensive view of the technical upgrades, as well as a useful, practical set of tips on how to make these work for you, best for you. Just before we begin, I'd like to remind all of you that the new release is going to be distri distributed to your non-preview instances this weekend. Okay, let's start with performance and goals management. So first up for the performance and goals is the change logging feature, which is a part of the GDPR. As an enhancement, you can now search for external users and generate a change by report for all changes made by external users as well. This will definitely save you time, several minutes, as well as make your auditing cleaner or clearer. Moving on to some nice features for mobile. So for Android users, the mobile goals management feature is now supported. Adding, editing, and deleting sub-goal tables and fields like tasks, sub-goal tables and fields like tasks, milestones, target, see on screen. So going forward, Android users will have the same functionality as iPhone users do. Additionally, for Android users, updates for the, to the mobile performance in performance reviews. Now you can add, edit, and delete performance goals and development goals on the performance form, as well as add, delete, and delete competencies on the performance form as well. Additional features are added, edit and view all custom element types in custom sections, and apply legal scan on text entered in text area fields. Again, all the functionality that iPhone users were experiencing up till now are now also available for Android users. So iOS and mobile users don't feel left out. There are some updates for you too. Actually, now both iOS and Android users will be able to take advantage of the complete continuous feedback feature on mobile. This includes giving and requesting ad hoc feedback, requesting feedback on continuous performance management activities, and linking ad hoc feedback to CPM activities and achievements. This is a real plus in promoting an ongoing continuous feedback culture in any organization. So let's look on at what, what's in store for compensation management is suppressing statements. Oftentimes, reward statements do not need to be generated for employees in certain situations, like for those not receiving a pay increase or bonus payout at the end of the year. Now, the comp administrator can define when statements are not generated by adding a custom column in the compensation or variable pay templates to control statements generation or statement suppression for an employee. Next and last one I'd like to highlight for this module is the check tool. In compensation and variable pay, even though we have a strong validation engine, there are still some checks that are not handled by validations and involve data or hierarchy checks. Going forward, SuccessFactors offers a check tool that is a system-wide tool which all modules can use and build configuration checks into. This tool will, be, will help consultants and compensation admins to troubleshoot the templates as well as hierarchy-related configuration issues. Using this, customers can test their configuration before the worksheet launch rather than having to wait for the worksheets to be launched in order to get the feedback. Moving on to succession management, seems like success factors really like icons. Now there's a Fury style icon set, redesigned for most commonly used fields in various succession planning screens like succession org chart, matrix grid reports, and talent cards. 
Here is something you've been all waiting for. Until now, the role readiness score on the career worksheet was, was always calculated based on competency expected rating, in which each expected rating met is worth one point, and each rating not met is worth zero. As requested by several customers, Success Factors is now offering an option to choose proportional calculation instead, in which each competency rating is weighted as a percentage of the expected rating total. In the last quarter, we spent a lot of time talking about GDPR, and now with the, with the May 25th deadline already happening, we hope that you were able to put in place enhancements and upgrades so your organization is GDPR compliant. For this Q2, there is an additional upgrade to Success Factors GDPR feature in succession. An enhancement relating to the right to be forgotten, now, now there is an additional purge option which allows customers to only purge succession nominations who are no longer active. They can now be removed, rejected, or succeeded. The additional purge option allows you to keep active nominations regardless of the date they were, they were last changed and to purge only in active nominations. That's all for this module. Let, let me now pass the microphone to Moti, who will take you through the other module highlights. Thanks, Danny. Hi, everyone. My name is Moti Itzkovic. I'll be covering a police central, MMS, ACP jam, recruiting management, platform, and mobile today. So let's start with Employee Central, my personal favorite, since I'm the lead consultant for this module. First, Employee Central enhancement is regarding the company structure overview. The site panel of the homepage now includes the structure hierarchy details, like how many entities are directly below the chosen entity, what are these entities type, like divisions, department, etc. It also shows how many more levels are below this entity and how many total employees and positions are associated with those entities. You will also be able to see how many positions under, the, under this entity are defined as to be hired. This site panel information is part of the role-based permission and you can decide based on your configured role, who should see what. Until this release, when a user wanted to change the employee manager, a vacant position under the new manager position was required. But now when changing an employee manager, it is possible to also move the employee position in single action with a single workflow. I should mention that if the position is moved, no other changes are replicated from the job information to this position, so you cannot move the employee position and change his grade in one transaction, for example. And another thing, if multiple incumbents are assigned to that position, all incumbents will get a new supervisor. So be careful when using this functionality, and I wouldn't advise using it at all for mass positions moves. Requesting certain documents from X employee is a very common scenario, as is the request to generate a document for a future higher employee. So with this release, customers can use the document generation tool to generate these types of documents for both active and inactive users. Moving on to time management. The team absence calendar has been enriched with some new features. This screen can be very helpful when planning your upcoming absence. I personally like that you can now make the clear distinctions between peer and direct reports, views. Peer views will show employees or colleagues in my team who are reporting to the same manager, while a direct reports view will show employees who I manage. The direct reports view also lets managers see more details regarding their team members' absences. Let's say you hired an employee on the wrong starting date. Before this quarter, this simple mistake would require multiple 
corrections. Now, instead of correcting the start date in a several portlets, you can make the correction in a single place and it will be reflected um, in all relevant portlets. I should mention that if you have enabled full time off on your instance, this will not be available for you though. Let me share with you some highlights from the LMS and SAP Jam modules. First off, LMS. Learning instance refreshes have typically been serviced manually, which has led to delays and post-refresh issues. With this release, SuccessFactors has built support for LMS instance refreshes through automated self-service instance refresh tool. So now you can have greater control over refresh scheduling and ensure a faster and error-free refreshed target instances. For those commercializing their LMS, the course home for scheduled items will now also support a flow for commerce scenarios. And it will also support two additional screens for the users to input relevant commerce related information, such as account code to use and a review and validation screen. When commerce is not relevant though, then a one-click express registration is available. I'm pretty excited that the mobile view of LMS is finally here. The image on the left shows you the program view from the course catalog tab your learning agenda can now be fully displayed with highlights of up to two learning items per program section with the option to expand to fully view the section content. The images marked by two and three shows a full view of a program after it is already assigned to a user. The familiar progress bar is at the top with new launch options for online items and options to mark text items as complete. So all of this is tentatively scheduled to become available in the June 2018 mobile release, since mobile releases are deployed on a monthly basis around the 20th of each month by success factors. For those customers implementing the continuous performance management module with their LMS, there is a model mobile enhancement for iOS devices only, allowing employees to create performance activities from LMS itself and mark completed courses as performance achievements. As mentioned in the previous slide, this enhancement too is scheduled to become available during June 20th mobile release. And lastly on learning, there are some native LMS GDPR related features introduced in this release the first is the learning activity purge process that purges audit data for curricula already removed from the user's learning plan, as well as the user's, re user's registration data. Secondly, the user permanent purge now includes additional data entities like bookmarks, organization dashboards, uh, user consent, and user login session information. When consent statements are enabled in learning, users will now be able to view the details of their consent statement under options and settings. And the last GDPR related enhancement in the learning module is the option for both internal and external users to revoke their accepted consent statement at any time. There should be a following action by the administrator to confirm it. We're seeing many more customers implementing SAP Jam, not only for better employee engagement and social collaboration, but as well for integrating with LMS and promoting lifelong learning, both for internal and external le learners. So let me share this quarter's recent SAP Jam upgrades, which would be interesting for those considering SAP Jam as part of their LMS or standalone module. Now Jam messages will be available at the group level as well. This is a good alternative to using group forums and makes discussions previously on in, only on, in forums 
more accessible and work more similarly like uh, to, to WhatsApp, uh, something more of us are familiar with. SAP Jam users can automatically include all group members in a conversation and open multiple threads per group to cover separate discussion topics and search all group threads more easily. This feature is available in all SAP Jam editions except the basic edition. There is now a header-based group navigation. This is a refreshing enhancement to an in-group navigation between the overview section and other group sections like con content and discussions. Now you have an alternative to the default left sidebar navigation and it can be enabled per group. From personal experience, using SAP Jam, this should reduce navigation overload in particular for groups that are heavy in content sections. Again, this feature is available for all SAP Jam edition except the basic edition. One thing that my colleagues and I found tricky was when we were collaborating on same document, we had to alert each other when one of us was working on a document, but now SAP Jam has a checkout mechanism whereby a user can check out a document to prevent over writes like when you check out a book from a library while the document is checked out other users must send edit request to the owner of the document or the group admins this should prevent accidental content overwriting and less frustration now for those of you who like using images in ACP jam you can now upload images directly into wiki page blog post overview pages and others without the need to upload the image file first. By selecting the Upload from Computer option, the image uploads and is not stored in Jam separately, which avoids the notorious feed not notification list for all those previous uploaded images. And on the mobile front, a new feed post experience for iOS and Android is being introduced it has a more up-to-date feel to it with a social media-like look and feel. Uh, in terms of functionality, it lets users combine status updates with photos, videos, and more, and at mentions and hashtags are more intuitive. The major enhancement in recruiting management is that job requisition can now be created and posted with more than one value for the location field. This is, a great for this is great for jobs where you are trying to source from two or more different locations. It's still necessary to mark one of the locations as a primary location, but now you can list more. Candidates can then search for this job by any of the locations selected on the job requisition. There are some prerequisites for that for this so if you are interested please contact us after this webinar next items are related to GDPR impact to the recruiting management module from now on when exporting the data subject information the report will contain also the name of the file for the fields of type attachments be aware that when the type of the field is multi-attachment and more than one file was uploaded to the same field, the report will show only the name of the first file. Next, the Admin Center offers options to delete and keep attachments when profile is purged. This would mean that attachments would also be deleted when profile is being purged. Thirdly, purge freeze has been activated. This is where the user, either the candidate him herself or other permission user, is unable to delete his or her candidate profile while purge freeze is activated. So for example, you can set a rule to purge all over one year old candidates, but due to any reason you want to prevent purging a specific candidate record. In that case, you'll have to activate the purge freeze flag for 
this candidate. When purge freeze is deactivate, deactivated on a candidate, then candidate data can be purged. It is, import, it is important in order to prevent purging candidates by mistake as the purge action is irreversible. And last regarding GDPR for recruiting management is that now interview notes are now automatically purged when candidate applications are purged. This includes relevant attachments are purged from correspondence portlet when applications are purged. So let me cap this all modules summary with the platform and mobile topics. As mentioned, there has been a lot of work by success factors to get organizations GDPR ready. Another relevant upgrade this quarter is a further enhancement to the system security and scalability. SAP success factors will be revising our SFTP file retention policy to purge all files stored in success factors SFTP accounts after 14 days from the type from the time of creation this policy will cover all data centers all customers all sftp accounts uh, so everywhere from now on the files must be stored on the sftp server only as long as it is needed from a from a business perspective some exceptions are still possible as presented in this slide you should keep in mind that the SFTP server is not a storage solution, but a file transfer mechanism. So this retention policy is in line with the purpose of the server. If you have been using it for storage, please reconsider this as you are doing it at your own risk and may have GDPR issues in the future. This policy does mention that customers are free to host their own SFTP server and that the SAP team will provide support in data migration. So please contact them for assistance. If you recall, when your user tried to create, edit, or delete a record on a custom portlet with a workflow attached to it, no validation messages were displayed on the portlet regarding the pending records. This inability to show if a workflow was pending wasn't very useful. So now a link is displayed on the custom portlet with the pending record and the effective date. And when the user and when users click the link, users will be able to view the record and status. This now ensures parity with EC behavior, which I know for many of our customers is a welcome update. Next up is the application check tool. As Danny mentioned before, the check tool can now run checks across all application as a single request. This becomes a useful baseline test to run following a software release or after major configuration changes or even on a regular basis. In addition, with this check tool, you'll be able to check for multiple integration versions that are scheduled. See if the same version was scheduled multiple times or check for missing field filters. Before, customers did not have direct visibility over who created super admin accounts via provisioning. This would cause provisioning system weakness and was a top security issues issue for our customers. Luckily, the Manage Provisioning Access tool has been enhanced so that customer admins can view a list of super admin accounts created through the provisioning portal. When provisioning user creates the super admin account in the provisioning portal, provisioner must confirm that customer has provided approval of super admin user account creation and notify customer by email. In this screenshot, you can see the manage provisioning access screen. This screen was introduced a few releases ago. On top of being able to manage the provisioning access approval, 
the customer admin can now view the list of super admin user accounts created by the provisioner. Moving on to mobile features, Danny mentioned some earlier, so here are some additional mobile enhancements. For both iOS and Android users, customers can use the deep links to launch the SuccessFactors mobile application from any custom application. The list of deep links is presented here. These will take users to specific screens in the mobile application when clicked on from a mobile device. And if the user does not have access to the navigation deep link screen, they will be taken, they will be taken to the home screen. We have seen that customers need the ability to hide inactive users, matrix managers, matrix reports, contingency users, or photos of the employee. You are now able to do this in the mobile org chart, which will apply role-based permission on all of the above, as mentioned here in the screen. This quarter, SuccessFactors is removing the web user interface versions of timesheet, time off, and org chart from the mobile PP3 employee profile. Since the features are already available in the mobile application, seeing this information on the profile is redundant and was confusing users, so they'll now be removed. So with that, we have taken you through the major enhancements across all SuccessFactors modules Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box or send us an email to info at aktglobal.com after this webinar.